Hello everybody. Welcome to using systems of equations for problem solving. Please take out your math notebook and label a fresh clean page systems of equations for problem solving. The first thing you're going to want to include in your notes are the following steps. Step number one, determine what the two unknown things are in the problem and assign a variable for each one. That literally means we want you to write down x equals, and you'll write down a quick expression for what does it represent, and y equals, and what you think the second variable represents. You do not always have to use x and y. You can use any variable that you think is appropriate. Step number two, write two equations from the information given in the problem. Step number three, solve the system created by the two equations. Step number four, answer the question from the problem in a complete sentence. Okay, we're going to do an example together. Our first step is to read the problem and to identify what are the two things that we don't know what they are. Allie's favorite numbers have a sum of 35. The second number is equal to four times the first number. What are Allie's favorite numbers? Okay, the two things that we don't know are Allie's favorite numbers. So the, th the two things that we don't know are the two numbers that are Allie's favorites. So I decided to assign the first number x. So x equals Allie's first favorite number and then I'm going to use y as my second variable and I'm saying that y is equal to Allie's second favorite number. The next step is to write two equations about the information given in the problem. So the first thing that I notice is that they're telling me that Allie's favorite numbers have a sum of 35. I know that the word sum means um, total, so I know I'm going to be adding. So my first equation is going to be x plus y equals 35. They also tell me that the second number is equal to 4 times the first number. So the second number is y. y is equal to 4 times the first number, which the first number is x. So here's my second equation. Step 3 from our notes tells us that now we want to solve the system. Since in my second equation, y is already isolated, I can take 4x and substitute it in place of y in my first equation. This can replace y in my first equation. So I'll have x plus 4x equals 35. Now combining like terms, I'll get 5x equals 35. Now I'm going to solve this simple equation by dividing both sides by 5. I get x equals 7. Now I can take that and replace it into either of my two equations to figure out my y value. I always recommend that you go with whichever of the two equations you think looks easier to work with. And that might be different for some of us. For me, the second equation looks easy to work with. I'm trying to figure out y, and y is isolated here. So I'm going to take 4 times my x value to figure out y. Okay, the last thing for us to do is to answer the question from the problem. The question was, what are Allie's favorite numbers? My answer is, Allie's favorite numbers are 7 and 28. Here's a quick summary of all the work that we did to solve that system. Please pause your video right now and just make sure that you've shown all of your work and that you have properly answered the question uh, using a complete sentence. Okay, let's take a look at this second example. There are 13 animals in a barn. Some are chickens and the rest are pigs. These animals have 40 legs in all. 
how many of each animal are in the barn? Okay, let's remember that we're trying to figure out um, what are the two things we don't know. Well, we don't know how many chickens live in this barn and how many pigs live in this barn. So we're going to assign a variable for each of those. Sometimes I prefer to use variables that are not x and y. In this case, I'm talking about chickens and pigs, so I use c for the number of chickens living in the barn and p for the number of pigs living in the barn. Okay, our next step is to look at the information in the problem and try to come up with our two equations that they give us information about. Okay, I know something about how many animals there are all together, and I also know something about how many legs there are all together. Okay, so first off, I know that there are 13 animals in the barn. So I can write a very simple equation about how many animals by saying the number of chickens plus the number of pigs gives me a total of 13 animals in the barn. Next, I know something about the legs. Okay, these animals have 40 legs in all. I also know, and it doesn't say this in the problem, and I know you know this too, that chickens have two legs each. So 2 times C plus pigs. How many legs do pigs have? 4. So 4 times P will be equal to 40 because that's how many legs there were in all. Now in this system of equations, None of my variables are isolated. So I have to look at my two um, equations and decide which one would be easiest to isolate one of the variables. And I definitely think the first equation, because both the C and the P don't have a number attached to them. Okay, so I'm going to subtract P on both sides, and that's going to turn my equation into C equals negative 1P plus 13. And I'm actually going to write that negative 1 in front there. Let me rewrite that. Okay, I think that'll help us. Okay, now I can take this, what C is equal to, and put it in place of C in my other equation. So directly underneath this blue, I'm going to do 2 times my C value, which is negative 1P, plus 13, plus 4p, equals 40. When I distribute, I'll get negative 2p, plus 26, plus 4p, equals 40. I'm going to combine like terms, and I'll get 2p, plus 26, equals 40. And now I'll subtract 26 on both sides. I'll get 2p, equals 14. Divide both sides by 2, and I find out that P equals 7. So what we've just figured out is that there are 7 pigs that live in this barn. Now I can take that value, P equals 7, and put it in up here to find out how many chickens I have. Negative 1 times my P value plus 13. C will be equal to negative 7 plus 13, and negative 7 plus 13 is 6. Okay, so my last step is to write my answer in a sentence. There are 7 pigs and 6 chickens in the barn. Alright, let's take a look at one more example uh, that we can do together. Joe scored 24 points in his basketball game. He made some 2-point shots and some 3-point shots. Joe made nine baskets altogether. How many two and three point shots did Joe make? Okay, so the two things that we're trying to figure out are how many two point shots did Joe make and how many three point shots did Joe make? So in this case, um, if I look at what I'm talking about, two and three point shots, they both start with the letter T. So obviously, we don't want to go with that. Okay, I decided to go with uh, T is going to be the number of two-point shots Joe makes. 
and I used H is going to be the number of three-point shots Joe makes. Now I could have used X and Y, I could have used A and B, you can really use whatever variables you want, but this is why it's very important that you assign a variable and when we say assign it, you literally write down what the two letters are that you're going to use and write down what they represent so that when you're answering the question later, you don't get mixed up. Okay, now I, knew, I know a couple of things. I know how many baskets Joe made, how many times he actually shot the ball and it went through the hoop, and we know that he made nine baskets. Okay, so my first equation about that could be T plus H equals nine. I also know something about the points. Okay, I know that he scored a total of 24 points. And I know some of those are two-point shots and some are three-point shots. So I'm going to put the value of the points with my variable. That means I'm going to have 2t plus 3h is a total of 24 points. All right, in this system, none of my variables is isolated, which means I need to get one isolated. And I think this top one looks pretty easy to do that with. I'm going to subtract h on both sides and say that t is equal to negative 1h plus 9. I can then substitute that into um, my second equation in place of t. So that means I'll have 2 times negative 1h plus 9 plus 3h equals 24. When I distribute, I get negative 2h plus 18 plus 3h equals 24 and now I'm going to combine like terms 1h plus 18 equals 24 when I subtract 18 on both sides I'll get 1h equals 6 meaning that Joe made six three-point shots wow way to go Joe you're a great three-point shooter Okay, I can take that value and put it into my other equation here so I can figure out um, my t value. t will be equal to negative 1 times my h value, which is 6, plus 9. t is equal to negative 6 plus 9. t is equal to 3. So now I'm going to answer the question. Okay, so now I am going to answer the question in the form of a complete sentence. And I said Joe made three two-point shots and six three-point shots. There we go. All right, guys, good luck.